This is my fourth A cure, and uh, it's always happy to be here. I think I have uh, a tremendous respect for the work that is being done within our field, and it's always great to meet colleagues and friends who are kind of pushing this forward, particularly those who are involved in the basic sciences and give a lot of the rationale for what we're doing. So I'm privileged to talk a little bit about the next stage of NCSI, which is called the ceramics trial, which is can escalation reduce AMI and cardiogenic shock mortality. These are my disclosures. So if you remember a number of years ago now, in 2014 and 2015, as we were planning NCSI, there was a lot of significant variability in the use of hemodynamic support devices in AMI and cardiogenic shock. There was very little standardized practice. There was a lot of different variabilities in outcome. And there was still a growing use of large bore access. And so device-related complication rates were still very high. There was even less data, actually, about right heart failure, ICU management, weaning, and escalation. And I think we should all just take a step back and say we've learned a lot over the course of the last seven years, and we should be really proud of that. What NCSI did, particularly for the AMI cardiogenic shock cohort, was created a uniform protocol that basically allowed for reasonably predictive outcomes. And it gave people a set of best practices to be able to replicate within their institutions. This could be uh, localized and, and transformed to, make, uh, to meet individual needs of any given center. But it uh, was established with some foundational principles, one being the early use of Impella pre-PCI. Uh, doing optimal PCI techniques to be able to improve, uh, um, revascularize the culprit artery and in select cases um, do other large bore um, vessels as well. Uh, to avoid escalating doses of vasopressors and inotropes, to wean um, devices based on invasive hemodynamics with right heart catheterization, to create hub and spoke models to be able to transfer these patients in. And a lot of those uh, steps have led us to very consistent survivals in AMI cardiogenic shock of well over 70%, with some sites very consistently getting survival rates of over 80%. And we've learned a lot during these last seven years as well. We've had more and more data from um, different um, registries, including the, the Cardiogenic Shock Working Group, on the importance of right heart cath and invasive hemodynamics in terms of guiding therapy. Uh, there's been an uptick in the use of hemodynamic support monitoring as well. We've established very importantly that cardiogenic shock should be treated acutely, um, that it should um, not consist of any treatment delays, and that it is a very significant point to implant hemodynamic support devices to rapidly reduce um, and rapidly reverse uh, the cardiogenic shock state that our patients are accustomed to. However, we have learned a lot of different things along the way. Jacob, um, uh, excuse me, Christian very elegantly actually um, showed to you what we've learned from the smart pump itself. So the Impella console can help predict right heart failure. And we know in NCSI in which 92% of patients um, had right heart catheterization that those who um, had right ventricular failure had an absolute mortality of about 14% more uh, than those who did not have um, uh, right ventricular failure. However, the use of right ventricular hemodynamic support devices and escalation as a whole within NCSI was actually uh, minimal and less than 20%. We similarly observed that this concept of just keeping the patient on vasopressors and inotropes and that just using the Impella CP, for example, is just um, sometimes not enough. Now, it's a minority of patients, about 20% of patients who require um, escalation based on hemodynamic criteria, but many centers didn't have the capabilities of um, advancing hemodynamic support within their center, and so they used vasopressors and inotropes to do that, and it's very clear that despite whatever cardiac power output target you have, the use of increasing doses of vasopressors and inotropes is independently a associated with worse mortality. And at the end of the day, we all have to remember that the reason these patients pass away is the vast majority pass away because of ongoing cardiogenic shock and multi-system organ failure. And so being able to reverse that is really um, the most important aspect of delivering care to these very sick patients. 
So as Bill coined the term, NCSI was really started as a coalition of the willing, right? Uh, people who were early adopters, people who were enthusiastic, people who really um, were leaders within their field to be able to you know, change the paradigm of how we treat patients in cardiogenic shock. And this came from a whole host of individuals, um, community-based practices where they were seeing a lot of STEMI in shock, and it really did transform the way we treat cardiogenic shock. However, I think that there's more work to be done. And not all of these centers are capable of doing um, the, the uh, current level of shock care that all of us may be accustomed to within our heart failure, LVAD, and transplant-like centers. Um, and I think that when you have all of the tools to be able to treat patients in cardiogenic shock, including multiple devices to be able to escalate their hemodynamic support, uh, you have the opportunity to really improve outcomes. And this comes with protocols and with the team-based approach. And so we've selected 20 of the best sites that all have MCS escalation capabilities, Impella 5.5, RV hemodynamic support devices. Hopefully the uh, RP Flex will be uh, initiated at ceramic sites before anywhere else. Ecpella that we've learned a lot about um, already within uh, multiple sessions. All of these centers are gonna have all of the tools to be able to escalate these patients and they're gonna be able to escalate them rapidly. So it's the same study definitions as NCSI. We're looking at uh, Skyshock stages C, D, and E. Our definitions are, are the same. Um, it's the same exact protocol. We're gonna escalate people um, early with Impella CP, revascularize them, um, do a right heart cath, and then decide on what's best to do. Uh, so it's the same NCSI protocol, it's just within centers who can do it from A to Z. And escalation can occur at any time. We hope that the majority of escalation will occur within the cath lab, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in the next slide, but escalation can occur subsequently thereafter in 12 to 24 hours. If you know the lactate is rising, if you know the hemodynamics are getting worse, these are all triggers to be able to escalate these patients. But we, what we really wanna do is make a push towards a survival of 80%, and how are we gonna do that? We're gonna recommend that we try to avoid use of anything more than one moderate dose inotrope or vasopressor. We're gonna to try to make sure that everyone achieves a cardiac power output greater than 0.6 in the cath lab. And this is the lowest cutoff. We hope that people use 0.7 and 0.8 as a, uh, a cutoff as well. And that if the cardiac power output is not sufficient, that we assess for RV failure, looking at the right atrial pressure, the pulmonary artery pulsatility index, diastolic suction alarms, all of the tools that we have to be able to um, you know, identify and treat right ventricular failure. And then we ideally want these patients to be escalated within the cath lab. And each center is still gonna be very variable in how they escalate. We're gonna have centers use RV Impella. We're gonna have centers who put in ECMO and use ECPELA strategy. There will be centers um, like Hackensack, hopefully, we'll put a lot of five fives in. So it just depends on the institutional culture of escalation. But it will be escalation in the way that we think is best with an unloading strategy. So the take home points of the trial is that we're gonna use hemodynamics to be able to um, ideally guide our escalation and to consider the um, you know, uh, markers of hypoperfusion as causes, again, for escalation of hemodynamic support device. Uh, the escalation should occur early and prior to multi-system organ failure. It should, uh, should occur in hospitals that have the ability to do this, right? And so that's why we are using a select uh, 20 hospital um, uh, initial uh, uh, trial to be able to make sure that everyone can do this and has a lot of uh, experience with this. And it's gonna be using a team-based approach, heart failure involvement, surgical involvement, and we hope that these will be future pillars that Naveen and Bill and Greg use as we prepare to get the country and the rest of the world ready uh, for the Recover4 randomized control trial. So thank you so much.